Welcome back to the great outdoors, everybody. I have got a challenge video for you today. 24 hours, me and the silver bullet, I'm gonna be camping out, trying to catch some fish to eat. I've got pretty much everything I need to survive out here on the lake for 24 hours, but we will need to be catching some fish for dinner. Today's video sponsor and literally powering us through the next 24 hours is going to be Blue Eddy, an awesome product. So while we're launching the boat, let me tell you about it. This is the Blue Eddy AC-180, and this thing blows away any other power station I've ever used, and you will not believe how much power it packs. Having a portable power station is an essential part of what I do because I'm always having to carry cameras and equipment with me to recharge, and I do a lot of truck camping, a lot of hunting and fishing trips that I need that extra power for but it's also a great thing just to have around the house for emergencies and just to power those things that you don't wanna run a long extension cord to. Blue Eddy hit the nail on the head with this AC-180 because it's the perfect match of size, power, and affordability. This has 1,800 watts of total output and it's got 1,152 watt hours. What does that mean? That means you're gonna be able to run a lot of your high output electrical items like your portable tools, saws, drills, your heating elements, heaters, space heaters, things like that off this in a portable unit. Most units, most power stations that are up to around 2000 watts of output are very heavy and bulky and big. This is something that you can pick up and then you can still run a lot of those high output items on. My favorite things about this AC-180 is it's very simple construction. You know, I'm rough on my equipment. This thing's gonna be riding around on the truck. It's very, very solid unit and it's simple. It's got four AC outputs. It's got multiple DC USB ports with a cigarette lighter as well. And you can easily switch from AC to DC power. When it does come time to recharge this unit, it blows away any other portable power station I've ever owned. 1400 watts of AC input, you're gonna get about an 80% charge in 45 minutes. That's incredible. So quick trip in, recharge it on AC, and you're gonna be good to go with days of power again on this unit. You can also hook it up to the solar panels and recharge it that way. If you are a truck or a trailer camper, even RV, this is a must right here. You know, the whole point of having a unit like this is to have quiet, efficient power. This thing runs at 40 decibels. It allows you to enjoy everything and not interrupt conversations. I hate loud gasoline running generators. It just ruins the camping trip. It's a good idea for everyone to keep something like this at home as well. Just in case the power goes out for a little while, in those emergencies, you can keep your refrigerators running, keep that food secure, anything else that you need to run, this is a good idea as just having as a backup if you need it. The price on these for 1800 watts of output is really affordable, guys. So go check them out. There's a link in the description. Secure one of these for your outdoor adventures and home security. We'll be using this to power us through the rest of the trip on board the Silver Bullet for 24 hours. So let's get on with the challenge. Leaving the dock, my nemesis lake, Ray Roberts. Huge lake, got a state park on it. Kinda wanna get lost out here. Wanna spend an overnight to bond with it. Maybe that will help me with fishing out here. So throughout today's video, we are going to be utilizing the Blue Eddy AC-180. It's going to be powering our refrigerator, our camera batteries. I can even recharge the boat. I've got a night fishing light. I'm gonna try a little night fishing as well. You guys know I use the refrigerator a lot, especially in the summer. Don't have to worry about ice, it's really nice. So 24 hours, it'll be no problem with that system. Okay, I've got all the gear strapped down in the back. I'll do a gear run through with you guys once we get to our first spot. Let's hit it. guys can see my watch it says 105 105 we're gonna officially end the challenge 
at 1. I was on the water probably about 12.30, but we'll call it 1. So in terms of gear, I already told you about the Blue Eddy, and we've got the Dometic refrigerator. On the back here, I've got my, my sleeping pad, my cowboy roll. I've never used it out on the boat, so it's hot. We're going to see how that works out. But I have a cook kit and one of these husky boxes, and then I've got basically a sleep kit and the other one. And some other little extras to hopefully get us through the bug situation. Mosquitoes have been terrible, so we could get eaten alive out here. Now my goal is to catch some food for dinner. Uh, white bass should be prevalent. They usually cooperate, we'll see. It's middle of the day right now, so fishing is going to suck for a while, uh, and crappie. Uh, not gonna eat a bass, but we're gonna do a little bass fishing. So crappie and white bass is really gonna be our first mission to try to get something in the box. Let's grab some poles and let's see if the fish are biting. Okay, I just had a bluegill tap my jig, but... Yeah, I don't really think these are crappies. Got something. This could be dinner. Yeah, yep. No, well, that's just a little appetizer. I mean, bluegill with giant bass, I think is what we're dealing with. There we go. Come on, baby. Dinner, get in here. Top of the tree, crappie. Not starving tonight. I think that one will measure. Let's go. Let's go. 11 incher, baby. Oh, yes. Mmm. Mmm. God, that just feels different when you don't have anything to eat. That just hits a little different. one crappie will pretty much sustain me I got bombarded by bluegills they bit one of my bumping bug legs off I think there's some huge catfish in there too that's part of what that is protein in the box y'all it's taken me two hours to catch a couple fish but I got a couple fish I'm feeling better let's do a blue eddy power checkup let's see how much power we've got in here after two hours Running the fridge in the heat. You can hear the fan cutting on in here. It's really quiet. 92% still. But let's go see if we can find us another brush pile that's got some hog jammers on it, like this one. They just didn't want to buy it, I don't know. They were definitely in there. And there was bluegill, I mean, it looked amazing. Uh, there's another one just across the way that I found last time I was out here, and it, it might be good too. So let's go check it out and see if we can catch a big hog bass. <laughs> Brush pile number two. Looks like a very similar situation. There's not as many fish, but biggins hanging on top. Just chunked a swim bait out here. I'm gonna throw that on the peak and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Oh, oh. Have one following it. There we go. That's a big one. 
Oh, shoot. Got him to react to it. <laughs> that was awesome. He was really close to the boat and I just sped it up real quick. Oh yeah, buddy, you are strong. I've got a big muscle for you. Ah, lost my swim bait, but got the fish. It's a nice three and a half, four pounder. That's how it's supposed to happen right there. First cast. There was a bigger one. This one was on top of a tree and he tagged it. Woo, baby, there we go. 24 hour challenge and we're having fun and we got dinner. Good times. Good old summer brush pile bass. That's a good way to catch these deep brush pile, brush pile bass and um, also like long extended points and drop offs. Instead of throwing it on the, the weighted one, like I've got over here. Well, they're both weighted, but this is a, a weighted weedless hook basically. It's just got a, this is a 3 8 ounce I think, maybe might even be a quarter on here so really good for like 10 foot or less this this is a three quarter ounce jig head throw something like that it's got some got some pop on it so throw that on the jig head and i'll probably not get another bite but you never know i might fire up the school here things could get crazy so i'm gonna do just a slight mod here and just kiss the nose off just to give it a flat surface to wedge up against and just thread it through. And if you want to get economical about it, like what I did with that last one, is I took the used swim baits off this because this has a screw lock in the nose and that will rip out eventually after you catch enough fish on it. But you can take that snip it a little bit and you can still get some clean plastic behind it so you can save your ones you use on the uh, on the belly weighted hook and throw them on the jig head it's definitely different on the water when you know you're going to be sleeping out here you know I'm just kind of taking it breezy right now I'm idling over things I've never idled around looking for brush rocks right now is like prime offshore fishing you know three to five o'clock in the afternoon so I'm just looking this lake is humongous it's got a lot of good deep contours and I'm sure if I spent enough hours out here I could find something really cool We are hooked up, boys. Spoon in the flats for kitty cats. Yes, sir. Big blues. It's my second one I've hooked. I am figuring something out about catfish that is pretty crazy. These blue cats like to eat spoons. <sighs> They're so close to the bottom, they look like the bottom. Ooh, this one's got leeches all over it. But I just had another one slam it about five minutes before this one. No barbs. That is tasty dinner, my friends. Oh yeah. Contact. We have contact. White bass located. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, man. You'd be a little tasty dinner, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. How many species is that today? 
drum, catfish, bluegill, largemouth, crappie, white bass. Doing it. That's pretty fun. So I just stopped off at a point and happened to see movement out here in about 26 feet of water. And I uh, got bamboozled on the spoon. I'm getting bamboozled right now. It's, uh, it's attack mode down there. Oh, yeah. You can see the fish. Look at them following it. They're like, where, where are you going, man? What do you got? Give it to me. Little guy. There's a large object amongst the little guys here. Let's see what we got going on. Spoon is going in. Oh, we got him. I think we got him. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's a largey. No, it's not. Thought it was gonna be the way it was coming. Coming up at the top, just a big old white bass. Mission accomplished on dinner all the way. I think I'm gonna do catfish dinner tonight. Maybe even crappie breakfast now? Possibly midnight crappie snack. You know, maybe stay up and fish. Got a little special, special light right here. This glows underwater. I can plug this in and drop down and fish on it for crappie or bass or whatever. Whatever wants to bite. We also might get uh, some rain. I've been looking at the forecast it's looking like a 70% chance right now. Uh, the wee hours, possibly tomorrow morning, uh, mid-morning, so that should be fun. So you guys stay tuned. Found me a nice little calm cove with some shade on the way. Take another hour, but we'll go ahead and start cleaning up our catfish and cooking it up and it's almost six o'clock power check on the blue eddy we are at 84 percent ladies and gentlemen it says we have 96 hours left i like this spot i might actually sleep here the bugs are going to be an issue because the woods is close they're going to fly on out and attack me Let's get our kitty cat uh, out of the live well. We're probably going to have to expire it first, give it the old bonk, and then um, we'll get in the water. I've never cleaned a fish with my uh, feet in the water, so this should be interesting. already see some flies, bugs. Now inside of here is my cook kit. So I've got a lot of accoutrement. I've got spices. Uh, Got stuff for tea, and got some honey in there. Got our propane. Got our trusty Coleman. And we've got stuff to eat with. And of course, don't leave home without a fillet knife. Got a fillet knife in there. I've also got another one that I keep in the bass boat. And I've even got a little rug so we can cook on top of. That way if we have anything hot, we don't want, want it getting on our actual boat carpet. So we're all set up here. Wow. Okay, these things are really digging in. These things are really awesome. I, I do like these raptors. We just expired our catfish using the old rock method. It's actually so nice right here on the bank. And I've got a lay down that I'm just going to carry the catfish over there. And fillet them up. I'm not even going to get the goo on the silver bullet. So, excuse me. I'll, I'll be right back. Look at how beautiful that is, y'all. Hardly any red in that meat. The blue catfish just has tremendous meat. I mean, they're awesome. I've been eating them a lot lately at home and blackened. Whew. I was able to do the skinning method just barely. 
uh, where I didn't have to pull the skin off. I just did it with the fillet knife. I did it on the log, which wasn't the best surface, but still got most of the meat off of it. So we'll do the next one and then uh, we'll throw it in the skillet. Throw this one in the fridge for now. It is now time to start cooking. <sighs> nice shade over here. I'm gonna get some dinner. Maybe get an hour, 30 minutes of daylight. Get a top water explosion, hopefully. All right, let's hope that our propane works. Got me a little lighting device here. Ferro rod. Let's see if this works. I think so. Get up here. Go. So one of the reasons that I wanted to do this challenge was because, uh, well, I mean, I love the outdoors. I've, I've been thinking about doing this challenge for a while, but uh, I got asked to send in some information for casting for the show alone. Uh, someone on casting was interested uh, in, in me just from watching the channel, and it, I didn't get cast for the show. Don't worry. It got me thinking, like, could I, could I do that? Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of stuff, and uh, I will push myself because I'm genuinely, genu I don't know how to talk, but I can just tell you I'm, I'm very interested in the uh, survival aspect of things. Uh, it goes right along with hunting, fishing, um, especially backcountry hunting. Our skillet is smoking. We should probably put some butter in it. Just thought I'd give you a little backstory to what's going on here. Oh yeah, we are going to butter the heck out of that, y'all. Can't have too much butter. There's no such thing. No such thing. Okay, turn that down. Let's turn that down. We got a nice brown butter there. That's that's pretty much perfect. Whatever just bit me is not perfect. That was horrendously painful. Let's spice this up real quick. Cosmo SPG. Little sprinkles landed on the fish there. The rest landed in the boat. We had a guy stop off at the, the Guggen HQ the other day, a veteran, and uh, he's a big, big viewer of the channels, and uh, he gave me some meat massage. Gave all the boys some meat massage, so I'm gonna hit it with a little meat massage and SPG. No binder on the fish. I usually do not do a binder on the fish. I'm glad I put my little my little rug down because we made ourselves a juicy mess right here. Alright. Butter's hot. Catfish quadrants going in. Yeah, buddy. We're looking about ready for a flip, y'all. Mmm, let's see what we got here. Looking pretty perfect. Our perfectly seasoned cast iron. Doing nicely. I think just a few more minutes and this is gonna be good to go. So we've got a fresh lemon. That's gonna be a tasty treat on top. Then I've also got some beets. Time check, we are six hours in. So let's get a Blue Eddy update. I am charging a few more things on this now, not just the fridge is going. I've been charging my light for tonight, also my GoPro batteries. And we're at 81%, it says 99.9 .9 hours. That just means it's kind of infinite at the level. It's only pulling two watts right now because the fridge is just out of temperature it likes right now. It's not it's not on, it's not running. It's just kind of settled. We don't have the sun on us right now, so it's it's not gonna pull as much power. Just as an experiment for fun, when I got back from a recent trip, I left the Blue Eddy and uh, my Dometic in the back of my truck and I left it running. And it lasted five and a half days. Five and a half days. And that wasn't like super hot temperatures, but that's pretty darn good. 
All right, let's just see what we're dealing with here. Cut the heat off. Let's pull one of these thin pieces off the skillet. Can I get a like button smash for a cold pop and a tester piece catfish bite, please? Come on now. Come on, holler at me. Blue cat caught about three and a half hours ago. SPG takes it home every time, y'all. That pop in it is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna add a little lemon to that. It doesn't even need it, really. It needs no ketchup. That is a fine piece of meat. Fresh slice of lemon. Clean the hands with some of the juices. But usually I like to clean this cast iron pretty soon after I'm done cooking it. I've got a little metal scraper. Uh, it's a chain scraper. And uh, why it's still hot, I like piping hot, but why it's still hot, I'll put a little water in it and I'll just scrape it with that. I rarely use soap. I'll use a little bit of camp suds, if you know what that is. Rinse it out good with water and I don't even rebutter it. I don't regrease it, nothing. Uh, and it's good. This, is, this, this baby's been with me on a lot of different adventures. This blue catfish, I think is leading the pack for me now on tastiest freshwater fish. Now when I taste a crappie, I'm like, I should go catfishing more. I, I'm sad to say that. It hurts me to say that, but they are fantastic especially the blue cats. So all you bass guys out there, next time you're going out bass fishing and you hook into one of those gooey catfish and you're like, Dad gum, I got a catfish. Try this recipe, okay? Put it in a, either a cast iron or a just stainless steel skillet. Go on a, a medium high heat, sear it with some butter and some spices. Do one flip on it. Then, already have your oven heated to 375. Throw it in that oven for about eight to 10 minutes. Don't flip it. Pull it out, let it rest a few minutes. Tell me what you think. Because I've been doing that at home and it is, it's the jam. Okay, done with dinner. I think I'm going to boot that crappie actually out of the live well because that catfish was extremely filling, delicious. And I feel very confident about the white bass. We are about to hopefully get a sundown topwater bite. That's the next goal, so let's let this guy go and then let's get to fishing. You were so lucky that I caught that catfish. See ya. Running that light. Really am. Sneaking up on me with some clouds. Oh, God. Just had one. God. Do I have a fish? What is this? Oh, my gosh. so small I didn't even feel it. Spotted bass. First official night bass captured. Okay, another species today, y'all. Holy cow. Get it, I, I might be approaching a record, personal record for myself for most, uh, most species in one day. Lights are officially on. This is when things get real interesting. I know you can't see me right now, but we found ourselves a nice tree. Now, let there be light. Oh yeah, we're going night dangling. Okay, I'm gonna send this over the side. Down in the water it goes. 
Gross. Well, this is sick. Check that out, y'all. That is really cool. Just send that down a little bit. See if it can attract some fish. I've got some trees that are pretty close to me here. I don't know if you can see those. First customer right here, baby. I don't know what the kind of minnow this is. He's, he's darting around. I want to see some big dark bass shadows down there. All right, guys, there's the light right there. And you can start to see there's some activity forming below right here. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to be able to see this on live scope. I think it's almost time to drop a crappie jig down there. There's tons of life under the boat, y'all. So I've got the live scope sitting, uh, facing the light, and I've I've got the uh, back graph connected to the front live scope uh, transducer, so I can sit in my seat and watch live scope. It's the best uh, late night boat entertainment there is. Okay guys, update. We just got our first fish in the boat. Night fishing, that's a crappie. Night fishing under the lights, man. I think that's my first time just dropping a, a light down in the middle of the lake and getting a fish. Got that fish on the uh, chubby grubby Oh, oh, I just had another one. Before bed update, we got ourselves a white bass, everybody. Send him back down into the light. Okay, we got our late night entertainment with our fishing light. Pretty fun stuff. So I can continue dangling around there if I see any extra big fish coming in. Now it's time for bed set up so let's grab the roll by the way my camera light that I'm running right now is on AC power and it's powered through the blue eddy let's unbuckle this and let's see this is going to be and wah, bam look at that it is like my front boat deck was made for this oh yeah We're gonna sleep pretty good. They are just coming in, y'all. They are just coming in. Oh, yeah. Oh, got him. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Oh, that's a runner. That's gonna be a white bass. Oh, he's stuck in the light. Oh. Oh no, he's stuck in my light. Ah, oh, get the light and the fish. It's like you either get a white bass or a crappie. Wabam! Here we go, guys. That's how I'm gonna end the night right there. That's fun times. I'll see you guys in the morning. survived the night oh, there was a storm there was uh, some bad winds that came in and I was just bobbing up and down got a little tough but we made it what a beautiful way to wake up though oh my gosh it's time to slip on the crocs look for a topwater bite I think I see some birds that are going they're all flying over here there's gotta be something going on. Oh yeah. All right, 
let's take this opportunity to get a Blue Eddy power check. Power check, 64% still. So, ran the fridge all night at 35 degrees, and it is good to go. All right. Definitely some shad spawning right here. I can see them. I can see the shad spawn. Oh, just got popped. Something's popping me. First cast getting throttled by a white bass. Let's see what this is. Oh yeah. Start the day. I'll take a first cast. Top water eat. Pretty fun. Oh. oh my gosh, I have a gar? Possibly? Gar on top water? Is that a thing? Yes, it is. You know how we do it. Big old snappy nose. Let's see, how can I unhook you without losing a finger this morning? It's my first top water connection on a gar. And I got him. Oh, he unhooked himself. Seem like a long time until you've been out here about 18. Didn't get the best sleep, hungry, but at least it's not raining right now. So I, I probably should have kept one of those white bass. <laughs> I was expecting explosions just to keep happening, and that shad small lasted like 30 to 40 minutes. I have fished so much in this 24 hours that, you know, normally in the morning I'm like, oh my god, I, I, I'm missing this, I gotta, I gotta zip around, blah, 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 I gotta, gotta make sure I'm on the bite. And this morning I'm like, well, you know, I fished till 12.30 at night. Uh, I, by the way, I ended up catching six crappie and I think four or five white bass. It was pretty fun just watching them on the live scope. But fished all day yesterday, so I'm good on the fishing department. We're trying to trying to survive here at this point. So I'm getting hungry, I need some food. I've got one more water, I believe, to last me five hours. Tail hook to channel cat, that's a new species, folks. Oh yeah. Oh, buddy's trying to get me. Is. Kind of feels like a catfish. And it's a drum. That's what it is. It's a it's a big old mega school of drums. Weird. have made it 24 hours y'all we did it we did it and I think we caught every species in the lake except maybe a yellow catfish but I really do think we caught every fish species in the lake we loaded the boat 
ended with 53% power on the Blue Eddy. Let me show you guys something that is really cool about this now. Now for me, going to remote areas, I wanna be able to do this where I can carry a solar panel with me to recharge this thing, keep it on the deck during the day, the solar panel, charge it up, and then recharge the boat at night if I don't have uh, power, if I don't have AC power, you know? Don't need an extension cord or anything. I just plug it in right here, check this out. So right now I am running both, I'm running both of my chargers right now. Now, this has already gone down to 28% in about 20 minutes, but I have 1200 watts coming out of it right now. So that is my, my lithium charger right there. And then I've got my Minn Kota over there charging my two AGMs. So this thing pulls the juice. So I'm gonna to continue to use this on some other trips and see how far we can really get. You know, recharging it with solar, how much I can get during the day, how much does it really charge up the batteries. I'm assuming I'm probably gonna get like uh, half a charge or three quarters of a charge with this, but I, I don't know, We're, we'll see. And that is it for this adventure, y'all. Thanks for hanging with me. 24 hours with the silver bullet. And also, if you like this sort of thing, if you like the challenges, let me know in the comments. I would be willing to go to some other bodies of water and do a do a intimate overnight. And also, don't forget to go check out Blue Eddy in the description, guys. They uh, I don't promote any products that I don't use and actually believe in. So this is one that I had tested they sent it to me and i was like wow this legitimately is the best one that i have used so check them out i think you guys will be happy that you get one and thank you for tuning in for another outdoor adventure i will see you soon on another one